Welcome to heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. This video is the last in a three-part series that will cover heparin-induced thrombocytopenia pathophysiology, diagnosis, and management. In this video, we will discuss part three, management. Let's begin with the following take-home points. If the pretest probability is moderate or high, stop heparin immediately. For thrombosis prevention or treatment, initiate a non-heparin anticoagulant. If there is no thrombotic complication, continue anticoagulant therapy until platelet recovery. To guide treatment initiation, use the pretest probability. The most commonly used pretest probability score is the 4 T's score. This score assigns points to each of four T's, including thrombocytopenia, timing, thrombosis, and other. A score of 0 to 3 is associated with a less than 1% risk of hit, a score of 4 to 5 with an approximately 10% risk, and a score of 6 to 8 and about 50% risk. In low-risk patients, no further diagnostic testing is needed. Look for alternate causes of thrombocytopenia. In patients with a moderate or high pretest probability, send an anti-heparin PF4 antibody ELISA assay and, without waiting for your test results, initiate a non-heparin anticoagulant. Initiating a non-heparin anticoagulant should not be delayed for laboratory testing. Therapeutic anticoagulation is required because, if positive, up to 50% of untreated patients will develop thrombosis. Additionally, untreated HIT has a mortality rate as high as 20%. With early intervention, mortality rates fall below 2%. Let's discuss anticoagulant choice. The choice of anticoagulant will depend on acuity, hepatic and renal function, and ability to tolerate and or absorb oral medication. In the inpatient setting, where most patients present, the preferred agents are parenteral. Parenteral agents include the direct thrombin inhibitors are gantroban and bivalirudin, both given by intravenous infusion. Other available parenteral agents are 10A inhibitors, fondaparinox, which is administered subcutaneously, and denaparoid. Denaparoid inhibits both factor 10A and thrombin, but its anti-10A effects are 20 times greater than its antithrombin effects. Denaparoid is currently not available in the United States. Stable patients or patients transitioning out of the hospital will be treated with oral agents. This category includes the direct thrombin inhibitor, dabigatran, the 10A inhibitors, apixaban, adoxaban, and rivaroxaban. They also include the vitamin K antagonist, warfarin. Warfarin can precipitate skin necrosis and venous limb gangrene. Therefore, it should not be used as initial therapy or before platelet recovery. At initial diagnosis, therapeutic warfarin should be reversed with vitamin K. Finally, let's discuss anticoagulant duration. Duration of anticoagulation depends on the presence or absence of thrombosis. If thrombosis is absent, treat until platelet recovery. In patients without bleeding complications, anticoagulation is typically continued for about four weeks. In patients with thrombosis, treat to the appropriate duration of anticoagulation. In patients without a prior thrombosis history, treatment will be for a minimum of three months. In summary, if the pretest probability is moderate or high, stop heparin immediately. For thrombosis prevention or treatment, initiate a non-heparin anticoagulant. If there is no evidence of thrombosis, continue anticoagulant therapy until platelet recovery for about four weeks. This brings us to the last of our three-part series on heparin-induced thrombocytopenia.